Hey everybody, Nick here, and this morning I got a disassembly video for you with this little guy. This is a custom knife by Cody Utzler. It's in his regulator lineup, and this is a knife I bought for my permanent collection, and uh, so here we go. Let's take it apart. This is uh, a nice, uh, there's a lot of good here. There's also some real ugly, and uh, but you know, this is a nice touch, having the carbon fiber on the top here, and uh, you know, the first step to this disassembly then is to take that off. And to do that, you just unscrew these little guys here and here. Once that happens, the carbon fiber slides off and exposes your two handle screws in the back here. Um, this is, by the way, a Torx T6 driver that I'm using for the handle screws inside and out. One thing to note is that the uh, handle screws go all the way through to the other side there which is fine. Also, you'll note that this backspacer is new since the sneak preview video. That's, there's a long story there. Oh, there's a long, long story here. But anyways, um, as you can see, I've now taken apart the back of the knife. Let's just flip it over, being careful to keep that blade sandwiched, and then pop the pivot off there, and we're disassembled. There we go, and this is a Torx T8 bit for the pivot. So we're popping everything loose, and there we go, we're taking apart. The knife is in many ways very simple and nicely designed at that level, so that's good. But uh, one thing I do want to point out real quick is that with the stop pin in, this is how close, <coughs> ah, pardon me, this is how close the blade is to the edge of the knife. Uh, that's absolutely absurd, and uh, yeah, we'll come back to that later on in the full review. But anyways, um, here we go. This is very nicely taken down here, and we can actually do some cleaning. This knife has been carried, and uh, it does definitely need some love, so I'm looking forward to doing this. Uh, okay, so we can start using some isopropyl alcohol, and then this is just a little cleaning swipe. A buddy of mine, Gary uh, Wack, on the Instagram, recommended I move to something a little bit smaller, and it's one of those suggestions I got where it was just like, oh... Yeah, of course I should. Good idea. Because, you know, the big paper towels block the whole scene. So I have a bunch of these around. So, you know, hey, why not? Let's just do it. So just getting in there and cleaning a little bit. <coughs> Wiping down the inside of the scales. This knife, unfortunately, has turned out to be a bit of a disappointment for me. Because that blade is so close to the edge of the scales, I can't really safely carry the knife. Um, it's very, very easy, and in fact, the first day I owned it, it cut my thumb open. And that's, that's ugly. I really wish that weren't the case. I actually sent it to Cody twice to fix it, and never quite did. Which is really, really unfortunate. You'll be hearing about that in the full review, but in many ways, this knife is a knife that's making me rethink the idea of custom being something I really want to do. Because with a good production knife, there's a whole bunch of work that can be done on the model over and over and over again. There's uh, quality assurance, and there's also just uh, many, many people testing it over time to really work the kinks out of the design versus on a custom knife, it's a little bit harder. You're trusting the maker a little bit more to catch all of those little issues. Like for instance, on this knife, an overstep clip. <coughs> ah, pardon me. And uh, the uh, blade being too close there. And if the maker doesn't catch those issues, then as the buyer, you're kind of up the creek. So there's a lot to be said for larger production runs and more hands doing testing on a given knife. Of course, not all customs are like that, and that's really a factor of the, the, the custom maker themselves. Um, some custom makers are going to be really excellent, and some are going to be a little less so. Some are young. Cody is young. See here, I'm just cleaning off the bearing. And to Cody's credit, He's been incredibly kind throughout this entire process. A great guy to work with, even if the end result is still a knife with a problem. There we go, cleaning this guy out. Yeah, I'm definitely doing some good there. <coughs> 
this knife, no matter what else, has an incredible action to it. Absolutely incredible. One of those actions that just makes you stop and whatever the heck you were doing and just go for it. Uh, and just, you know, wow. Absolutely blew me away. Still does blow me away a little bit. Not quite to the level of Norseman, but for Cody to get something like this... <coughs> wow, don't know what's going on this morning. Uh, but for Cody to get something like this without any kind of CNC approach, he's very, very much impressed me here. So... I gotta give credit where due. Really good action. Just wish the West of it had worked out okay. Alrighty, so um, I've got everything taken down here. You can see that the interior construction on the knife isn't super different or interesting. Screws for the clip are, um, let's see some scratch in there. The screws for the clip are on the inside, works fine. <coughs> Beautiful thing. And there's nothing so terribly interesting beyond this. Internal stop pin. Nice bearing race. You can see here that he protected the uh, bearing race from the uh, etch, which is a beautiful thing for the Damasteel. Note the Damasteel. It's got a really cool pattern, too. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and put the thing back together, shall we? Okay, so this is a knife that I feel like needs to be put back together backwards because the, uh, the pivot itself... <coughs> The static side of the pivot is the presentation side. Certainly not a problem. Lots of knives do that. But just something that's not intuitive to me, given that lots of knives don't do that. Applying a little bit of nano oil here. I can't wait to put this guy back together again, because like I said, the, the knife was good and dirty. And so the action's going to be way, way better <coughs> for all of my efforts here, no doubt. And dropping the bearings on there and just rotating them around through the course a little bit to get some of the oil up on top of them. All right, a little bit of oil on the bearing race. Again, slightly over oiling, but this is a knife that's so damn nice action-wise that I feel like it deserves it. There we go. Go ahead and drop in the stop pin while I'm going for this. And actually, while I'm rebuilding this guy, because the backspacer needs to live in there, I'm going to go ahead and pop the backspacer screws through. Um, they will just rest against the table there, but more importantly, they give me a place to uh, put the backspacer. Come on now. There we go. Just make sure that the backspacer is in, in the proper orientation, which it appears to be. Beautiful. Now I'm going to apply a little bit more nano oil right here. And I'm going to put down the bearings facing the blade. Again, I'm not 100% sure that the side actually matters that you um, place the bearings on, but by God, I'm gonna do it. You can see here, I'm doing the detent and there is a beautiful little detent ball ramp Again, very, very nicely done there. It's one of the most frustrating things here is that this knife, the hardest parts are the ones that are done really well. <laughs> so it's like you've got this incredible action, you've got all, but then the clip doesn't work and then the, the, the blade cuts you open when it's, it's closed. Um, like I'd love to believe. Anyways, moving along. Doing this review is really hard. I've been thinking about this for a long time, how to best do this. Well, being fair to Cody and being fair to people looking at his stuff in the future. Just put a little Loctite on there, and I'm dropping the pivot in here. I'm just going to crank it down for the meantime. And then I'm going to flip the knife over, swap out the bit. Actually, I am going to use an oiler. Longtime fans may notice I am finally using a new tube of Loctite, which has been a long time in coming. I just punctured the very tip of this tube, which allows me a little bit more control with it. And so I'm just putting a little bit of Loctite up on this little 
spring bar tool, which I use as an oiler, and just distributing it a little bit around the, uh, the scale portion where those screw in. So now I can screw this in, and it'll be on lockdown. Beautiful. The milling here is very nice too. Okay, my pivot is way too loose, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the pivot before I put on this carbon fiber cover. I could do it the other way, and I believe this knife to be close enough to tight tolerance that I, I don't need to think about it um, in terms of I might need to loosen these screws to get everything Okay, if it's a little too tight, but everything is centered. And so at this point, in order to, you know, be nice to my end. One other thing I want to point out again here in the name of Aaron the Excellent. Take a look, see here. You can see that there's actually a slope in here uh, that's matched by the slope on the carbon fiber. And so when I stick this in here, they're not just a budding. The, the metal is actually coming over the carbon fiber, which is a really, really nice little touch. That's a great little thing from Cody, a great trick. And so I, I got to appreciate that very much. Nicely, nicely done. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Loctite on these screws here. Again, just to make sure they're staying in place. Oh, come on, you little bugger. And I'm backing it out just to make sure I'm not at an angle. Uh, why is this not wanting to... There we go. Just had to move the carbon fiber very slightly in order for that guy to want to go home. Using force is never a great idea unless you are a Jedi when doing knife assembly. Because usually it's a sign that something is slightly out of alignment or wrong, and pushing it, you're either going to strip the screw, or you're going to have some other sort of problem. All righty. Beautiful. Now let's just adjust the pivot a little bit here. Not quite there yet. Almost there. Loosen it up a little bit more. Check for blade play. Zero blade play. And it absolutely falls shut. All right, we are all set with our Cody Utzler regulator here. Be on the lookout for the review on this guy. And uh, really interesting challenge as a reviewer. But uh, all righty. Hope this was interesting to you. Very interesting knife. Very well constructed in many ways. But uh, yeah, have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.